Let's bring in Teron Davenport, USA Today, Eagles Wire, as he joins us now on the Sports Batch 97.3 ESPN. Teron, how are you, friend? Hey, what's going on? Everything is well. How, how are you guys? Everything's good here. Everything's kind of backwards uh, on the time this week. We know it's uh, kind of yeah. everything's been all knocked out of whack here. But uh, Eagles getting their practice in today down in Anaheim. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the Rams, their practice had to be moved or canceled or, or something because of these uh, fires out there? Yeah, there, there was a low quality of air, so they had to uh, cancel their practice. We'll see what happens today. That was yesterday where they had to do it, so okay. we'll see about today. So, uh, you know, it, it's unfortunate, everything that's going on. Uh, fortunately for the Eagles, they're south of where the fires are occurring. Uh, Teron, uh, let's start with Zach Ertz. Uh, he remains in the concussion protocol, but is the anticipation that he'll be able to play this week? I, I think it's really just a matter of, you know, whether or not he gets cleared. I, I don't know. I mean, Doug Peterson didn't really give any inclination that, that he's going to play. He just really wanted to kind of leave that one alone. Um, I, I would think that he would be back, but, I mean, you, you never know. Because during the game they showed uh, on the big screen, they showed him on the field. And he really did. He looked disoriented. So, I mean, it's going to depend on, on how severe the concussion was. Obviously, with, with how things are going with, with the league and the concussions and everything, they, they, you know, white glove treatment for that. So we'll see what happens. Teron, obviously, this is, uh, I think the Eagles and the Rams have exactly the same amount of points scored this year. They're both uh, two of the highest scoring teams in the league. Uh, what. Jim Schwartz, uh, when he looks at this Rams offense, where does he focus on first? Well, I, I think mainly you focus on Todd Gurley. You have to take away the run. You, you always want to make a team one-dimensional. And really what, what they do best is run the football, and they, and they work a lot of play action off of that. You look at what Gurley's done, running the ball as well as catching the ball. They like to the play action, and they'll use that play action after the run is established to influence the linebackers to step up. They go to Cooper Cup on crossing routes out of bunch formation uh, over, uh, you know, over top of the linebackers. So it, it opens up space. So you really want to stop the run. Um, you want to put it all on Jared Goff. He's playing outstanding. I mean, it's it's easy to say he's a top 10 quarterback in, in this league. He's uh, made a, a, a great improvement from year one to year two, and he deserves a lot of credit as well as Sean McVay. So it, it's all about stopping the run, though. That's that's really what it comes down to. Yeah, one of the things you asked um, of Jim Schwartz was about that relationship there, and a lot of people have indicated that McVay and Goff talk a lot and, uh, you know, inside the headsets there, and people question whether or not that's helping Goff uh, or maybe uh, kind of a, a crutch for him. But uh, this was the guy drafted number one in the draft for a reason. So this combination of Goff and McVay, they could be a killer for a long time. Oh, yeah. I mean, when you compare a young, brilliant offensive mind like uh, McVay with a quarterback that has all the ability that, that Goff has, I mean, it's a recipe for success, and it's a bad thing for the rest of the league. I mean, it, and then you have a running game. You have a very uh, – uh, Cooper Cup is a vastly underrated receiver. He was one of the best receivers coming out last year. A lot of people didn't give him credit for that. Steve Smith actually uh, felt that Cooper Cup was the best receiver in the last year's draft class. I wouldn't go that far, but still, you know, you also have that option. You have younger tight ends in Tyler Higby and a developing guy in Gerald Everett, a second-year player. So there's a lot of options. Actually, Everett's a rookie. There's a lot of options for him. Uh, Robert Woods has improved. So, yeah, I mean, this team is, is definitely full of weapons. Hey, uh, Teron, we didn't get a chance to really talk a lot about the Alshon Jeffrey contract because it happened over the weekend, and then the Eagles lost, so it kind of got swept under the rug. Uh, but did you like the deal, and what did the deal kind of signify? I mean, to, it kind of signifies, I guess, that they really like what he brings, that it's more about his – it's not about his numbers as much as what he means to that offense in that locker room. Yeah, I mean, Alshon Jeffrey was really something that, that they – felt they had to do, and I think it was a reward for how he took the team-first approach. He didn't complain when he wasn't a focal part of the offense, you know, when everything was flowing through uh, Zach Ertz. And a lot of times when, when you see a particular player excelling, there, there's other reasons. You know, a lot of coverage was being rolled to Jeffrey, and uh, he started to excel in the red zone, and I think really that's something for Carson Wentz. You know, it's all about developing uh, that quarterback. And – Really, signing Alshon is a part of that. He's a big target. He's a reliable option. So that's what goes behind that move. 
you know, we saw the play where uh, really Seattle kind of had three guys in his direction, and, and that was the throw that Wentz did not make. He overthrew Nelson Aguilar on that play, but it kind of shows the attention that he brings, even if he's not making plays. But really, he's developed into a steady red zone threat for them. I think that's really uh, an underrated yeah. skill that he's brought to this team is inside that 20, he'll make the play. Oh, yeah, 100%. And what everybody looked at Alshon as far as a red zone threat, they thought it was about the back shoulder and the, the jump balls. But what he's shown to be able to do is get that, get inside a corner, use his big body to shield him and catch. He's very reliable. I mean, when you could throw the ball in those slants and, and trust that your guy's going to bring it down and, and place it where Wentz does, I mean, that, that makes it a lot easier for the offense. And that's why they were averaging, what, 70% touchdowns on, on their red zone visits. Obviously, 0 for 2 against Seattle, but yeah, that's definitely why. Teron Davenport's with us, USA Today. Teron, uh, they lost that game. Mood from about midnight Sunday night to now. Have you seen uh, – are they past that? Yeah, they're past that. I mean, there's still questions about Russell Wilson and what he was able to do. I mean, we're asking that. But uh, they're past it. It's on to the Rams. I mean, they understand that really, you know, it's all about making sure that, that they bounce back. And that's been the mentality even after the game. A lot of us were asking about that, and it's all about the bounce back. They're ready to move on, and uh, they want to prove that they are one of the best teams in the NFC, and they could do that with a win this weekend. Um, you mentioned Wentz, uh, excuse me, Wilson. They're going to face Goff, who's a little bit more statuesque. Do you feel that that's a difference? The, just the fact that a guy not moving around. Like In other words, if Wilson's not the quarterback Sunday night, is that a different game? Yeah, it is a different game, and I actually talked to Brandon Graham about that. And, uh, I mean, when you have a guy that, that could negate your pass rush the way that, that Russell Wilson did, it, it's going to hurt a team like the Eagles, whose strength is their front four. So, yeah, 100%, uh, their defense will be a different defense against the Rams this weekend just because of golf, you know, and, and how he is more stationary in the pocket. But don't get it, get it twisted. He can move and make throws on the run also. It's something that he had to do at Cal. You know, he could use different release points and, and, and make it happen. So, I mean, Goff is a quarterback that obviously not the same as Russell Wilson, but he still is able to extend plays. He can still make all of the throws. He's, he's shown it, and, I mean, I think he's a really good quarterback. So it's going to be different, but, you know, obviously going from Russell Wilson to Goff is, is – uh, something that I'm sure the Eagles defensive lineman would prefer. All right, we'll uh, we'll get you out on this one. I know that uh, Sean McVay is speaking here in a couple of minutes. You'll be uh, on that conference call, Teron Davenport. Uh, Aaron Donald, uh, he's probably the best player on defense, specifically on the defensive line that they're going to see all season long. That's got to be a major concern after what we saw Sunday night. Well, yeah, I mean, that would be a concern. But uh, really the problem where the pressure came was from the outside. And so you want to look at Vitae against Robert Quinn. I mean, that's a matchup that you want to be concerned about. Um, Aaron Donald, though, he's disruptive. He's a guy that is able to, you know, get instant penetration into the backfield and, and make the running back redirect his, his uh, path, you know, to the second level of the defense, as well as get back there and, and get pressure on the quarterback from the interior, which is never good for a quarterback. So uh, definitely got to be worried about. But there's so many people on that. Marcus Joyner. No one talks about him, but he's very rangy. He's very active against the run also. you got Mark Barron, Alec Ogletree. That defense is, is definitely legit. The Rams are a legit team. I don't, don't uh, you, you know, get that confused. Yeah, and a lot of times, Toronto, people just have a hard time. These teams haven't built up the equity. You know, they haven't made the playoffs in a long time. You just kind of come out of nowhere. Same with the Eagles. People need to see more sometimes, and, and I think that's fair, right? I mean, we could say we believe they're good teams, but – universally people need to see more from the teams because they don't have the, the equity build up. Yeah, I mean, that's really what it boils down to. And, you know, it, it's getting later in the season, so they'll be fine. I, I, both teams, you know, you play who, who you line up against and, you know, you just continue to progress, and that's what they've done. Uh, Teron Davenport, of course, USA Today, Eagles Wire. Check them out. Uh, and, uh, of course, here on the Sports Batch, he's in L.A. covering Eagles and Rams. Thanks, pal. All right. Thank you.